Hey, it's Nikki Llewellyn and you're on Gut Plus Science. This podcast is on a mission to increase engagement at work. And on this show, we equip CEOs and people first leaders of all levels to make impact. Let's get to it. Hey, Gut Plus Science listeners, I don't think I've met anyone with more passion and fire for both inclusion, valuing the uniqueness of every human, and her jam, which is coaching new and emerging leaders, than Anne Bono. Anne helps build new and emerging leaders to create a human-centric future of work for themselves and their teams. Excited to share with you. Take it away, Anne Bono. Well, hello there, new and emerging leaders. It's Anne Bono here, your leadership coach, ready to demystify your leadership philosophy, boost your management superpowers, and run alongside you as you become an empowering leader and a terrific people manager. And today, I am so excited because we are going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite topics, feedback. So, Why are we going to be talking about feedback? Well, we're going to be talking about feedback because it is one of the most crucial components of a transparent, psychologically safe, vulnerable work culture. Feedback is the way that you kindly and objectively let your teammates know what they're doing right, how they can improve, and how you can help them get there. It is a crucial component of both coaching and mentoring, and ultimately, it is essential to building trust and rapport in your team. So let's start by talking about the elephant in the room, though. Many folks, whether they want to admit it or not, are terrified or at least a little bit scared of both giving and receiving feedback. Why is that? Feedback often gets a bad rap because it's seen as criticizing someone. I like to phrase it a little differently. I don't see feedback as negative, and to be honest, neither should you. Feedback is giving someone information kindly and objectively so that they can get better. It is also an opportunity for you to highlight the things that you believe went very well so that folks know they should more they should do more of them, and it is an opportunity for you and your teammates to collectively bond over what's going right, what could be improved, and what the team needs to succeed. Ditch the negative connotations that come with feedback. Repeat to yourself, I am not criticizing someone's ability. I am not attaching negative connotations to someone's personality. What I am doing is kindly and objectively giving someone the information to either do more of a good thing or improve on something that hasn't gone that well. Ultimately, in my mind, feedback is a way to help all team members find their superpowers. But Let's not kid ourselves because everyone has feedback baggage. Everyone. I do, you do, everyone has feedback baggage. You can, I'm sure, point to at least one occasion in which somebody has given you feedback that felt personally targeted, pointed, or extremely subjective. Everybody has been burned at some point by feedback. And that's why I highlight and constantly remind folks that the goal here is to focus on the actual output of what you're giving feedback on and not the person giving the feedback. The feedback has to be as objective as possible. And in order to do that, the focus needs to be on process and result. Many of us carry what I call corporate trauma, and feedback can definitely be one of those things that cause a trauma response. So when you're delivering feedback, Don't do it in a vacuum. Make sure you're paying attention to the reactions and responses, both physical as well as verbal, of the person to whom you're giving the feedback. Be mindful of the circumstances. Be mindful of the effect that you are having. If it seems that your feedback, even if it's positive, is having an adverse effect, ask if it's okay to continue. Because ultimately, feedback has to be beneficial and has to have benefits to the person receiving it. And if it doesn't seem to be an appropriate time, it is okay to stop and come back later. Okay, so now that we've talked around the elephant in the room and what we need to watch for when we're delivering feedback, let's get down to some practical steps. What should you do in order to be able to give feedback effectively? Well, the first step is just normalizing it. Make it part of your regular conversation. Don't make it taboo. Giving feedback should not be a big deal. It should just be a part of your daily interactions. Make it a part of your everyday routine and definitely make it a part of the one-on-ones that you have with your teammates. 
And as you do that, let's talk about some of the do's that you have to do when it comes to feedback. I have four primary do's when it comes to this most important and crucial building block of a workplace culture. First, give feedback in the moment. Don't batch it. If you see something positive, praise it. Don't wait to give that praise. And when you see something negative, also make it known and do so in the moment. But this leads me to my second point. Praise publicly, but critique privately. When it comes to positive feedback or praise, give it publicly. And why should you do that? Because teammates should know what others have done right. This will allow other folks to take a look at that positive feedback then seek to replicate that kind of behavior. It also allows you to give credit where credit is due as a manager. Positive feedback can have an amplified effect to both recognize people and give other folks permission to do positive work themselves. But when it comes to negative feedback, it is better to give it in private. Pull your teammate aside, give the context around what the negative action was that you observed, and then ask questions as to what could have led to that action. This will give folks who have engaged in behavior or actions that could have been better to privately reflect on what they could do to improve and also potentially ask you candid, unguarded questions about your observations so that they can have that context to get better. The third do to keep in mind when it comes to feedback is to separate the how from the what. And what does that mean? Well, it means that how somebody does something is much different than the what or the result that somebody achieved. Ultimately, you shouldn't be criticizing how somebody gets to results. After all, everybody has different ways of achieving a result and oftentimes processes differ. But you should be focused on if the results didn't have the intended or desired effect. This allows you to keep personality and subjectivity out of the feedback conversation. Focus on outcomes and effects when giving feedback. And this leads me to the fourth do of feedback, which is to avoid immediately jumping to conclusions. Instead of making assumptions around how something came to pass, particularly when it comes to negative feedback, Ask questions to get context. Here's an easy way to do so. Start by making an observation of what happened, an objective observation of what happened. Whether it's a turn of phrase or a result or an action, describe what you observed and what your perception was, and then ask questions. Give the person receiving the constructive feedback an opportunity to give context and explain the circumstances around the situation. This will allow you to better coach or mentor that teammate and better understand what it was that led to the outcome for which you are providing feedback. Okay, so we've talked about the do's. What about the don'ts? I have one big don't and anybody who follows me on TikTok will know it. I am not a fan of the feedback sandwich. Not a fan, not a fan at all. Love sandwiches in real life, don't love them when it comes to feedback. So what's the feedback sandwich? I'm sure you know, but let's just recap it for maybe the one or two folks listening to this podcast that don't know. In a nutshell, it's when you choose to give someone negative feedback sandwiched in between two pieces of positive feedback, all in a single sitting, in a single meeting, or in a single one-on-one. Why don't I like the feedback sandwich? Well, because perhaps just outside the one or two people listening to this podcast who don't know what a feedback sandwich is, almost everybody is very keenly aware of this tactic and method. And if you're in the habit of giving it or the folks receiving it are in the habit of getting it, they will not be paying attention to the positive feedback that you're giving them because they know what's coming. They're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So any positive feedback that you might be giving, it's gone. It's disregarded. It's impact and power completely obliterated. It's simply seen as a gateway to the negative feedback. And ultimately, the negative feedback lacks contextualization and urgency because it's typically not being given in the moment. So the positive loses impact and the negative loses the ability to improve when you're giving it in a feedback sandwich. I'll say it again. If you have positive feedback to give, give it when the positive things are happening. 
If you have negative feedback to give, do so privately and in the moment. Allow folks to have the immediate context, both positive and negative, so that they can more effectively take that information to either do more of the great stuff or improve on the things that can stand to improve. So here's your challenge for the next month until we get a chance to talk again. Give folks on your team in the moment feedback. See something great? Dish out some positive feedback. See something that can be improved. Set some time to privately and objectively make observations, ask for context, and coach your teammate on how to improve. Focus on being kind, direct, and objective. Remember that the purpose of feedback is to improve teams, not criticize individuals. You got this. You can do this. Use that feedback to build that transparent, contextualized, psychologically safe culture. So I would love to hear how this is going for you. You can find me on LinkedIn and connect with me there. Find me under Anne, A-N-N-E, Bono, B-O-N-O. You can also find me on TikTok. I love that platform, especially when I'm criticizing a feedback sandwich. You can find me at Leadership Coach Anne. I hope to see you there. We just left the world a little bit better. Now go do something with it.